Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the online worship of Word and Sacrament of Nativity and St. Paul Lutheran Churches in Reading, Pennsylvania. This is the Sunday that we remember Mary, the Mother of our Lord. We are blessed that you are joining us for online worship and remind you that we have limited in-person worship at 5 p.m. on Saturday at St. Paul's and at 9 a.m. on Sunday at Nativity. This coming week, we will be filming worship, and we thank those of you who are participating in that work. St. Paul's Council will meet this Wednesday at 1 at St. Paul's in Fellowship Hall. Our prayers are with the families of Jim W., especially Ken K., and Larry C., especially for his parents, Lillian and Clarence. And now, dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us worship Jesus, God's Son and Mary's Son. Always remembering our baptism, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. Dear ones, beloved of Christ, let us confess our sins trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God. We confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our siblings as you first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy, 
Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Know that he loves you very, very much and always has you turned to him. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Almighty God, in choosing the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, you made known your gracious regard for the poor, the lowly, and the despised. Grant us grace to receive your word in humility and to be made one with your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 7 through 11. Because the shame of God's people was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion, everlasting joy shall be theirs. For the Lord loved justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord is blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden, causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord has heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around us who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir, through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. 
He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is indeed the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, my name is Mary. I am the daughter of Anna and Joachim. I am the wife of Joseph. I am the mother of dedicated sons and faithful daughters. I am the mother of my oldest son, the one you probably know best, Jesus, your Lord and my Lord. What a life I've had. I know I'm coming to the end of it, and I'm thankful I can share some of my life with you today. Throughout the ages, our awesome God has worked through many people to tell of God's gracious love and mighty acts. Today, I pray God works through me to share the good news with you. Many, many years ago, when I was the age of my great-granddaughter, I was outside our home gathering herbs and vegetables for my mother, for we were going to be preparing the evening meal together. I will never forget that afternoon. It seems like it was just yesterday. There was a gentle breeze, and I remember hearing the birds. All of a sudden, time stood still. No sounds, no breeze. I sensed a presence, but I had no fear, just a sense of peace that I had never experienced before. I turned and saw a man. I think it was a man, but not like anyone I had ever encountered before. He was powerful, and there was this radiance surrounding him. His name was Gabriel, and his greeting confused me. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Favored? Me? I was just a poor young girl in an occupied country. My parents loved me, and they loved and were faithful to Yahweh. They taught me well about the stories of God and the ways of God, which we followed every single day. Like all of Israel, we watched and waited for God's promised Messiah, who would save us. So you can imagine my astonishment when Gabriel told me that I would conceive and bear a son and name him Jesus, which means God saves. I would have the Messiah? Me? Mary? How could that be? I was engaged to Joseph. How I loved him, but we had never been alone together. Gabriel told me it would be by the Holy Spirit, and the child Jesus would be the Son of God, to assure me that everything was possible for and with God. Gabriel told me that our kinswoman Elizabeth was now six months pregnant in her old age. Elizabeth, what a miracle! For all of my life, I knew how much she and Zachariah longed for a child. And now, with God, it has happened. Gabriel told me not to be afraid, and surprisingly, I wasn't. I said yes to Gabriel. I said yes to God. May Yahweh help me. I said yes but before I said anything to mother or father or Joseph or anyone else, I knew I had to speak with Elizabeth. My parents were reluctant to let me go to visit her, but they finally consented. It took me a while to walk to get there, and the sight of Elizabeth was amazing. Obviously pregnant, glowing with health and joy, her words confirming Gabriel's words. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She said that her baby leaped in her womb at the presence of my baby in my womb. I responded what is called the Magnificat. You heard that just a little bit earlier. Being with Elizabeth gave me the strength and the courage to go home and tell Joseph and my parents what had happened to me. At first, Joseph was skeptical, understandably so, and he decided that he would quietly set me aside and not marry me. Oh, that broke my heart. But I realized that he needed time and that he needed God to come and to tell him as well. God sent an angel to my beloved in a dream, telling him what had happened. Joseph also said yes to God and took me as his wife. What a joyful day that was. With God and Joseph, we could face anything, even the stares and the whispers of the townsfolk. You know the story of our son's birth, the story of what you call the nativity of our Lord or Christmas. All believers know about Jesus' birth. Let me tell you, the trip to Bethlehem on the back of a donkey was hard and uncomfortable, but my Joseph was such a blessing, so caring and kind to me and then to our son. Yahweh chose the right husband for me and the right earthly father for Jesus. Joseph was determined to find a warm and safe place for us and to deliver our child, God's son. There we were, surrounded by the sights and the sounds of animals who were the first to welcome the Messiah. Next to see him were the shepherds from the surrounding hills. They told us that the angels had appeared and announced Jesus' birth and sent them to worship him. After they left singing praises to God, Jesus, Joseph, and I settled down for some sleep, wrapped in our love and God's. Oh, what a first night that was. Rather than going back to Nazareth, we decided that we would stay in Bethlehem because we would have to go to the temple in Jerusalem for my purification after childbirth and for Jesus' formal presentation. When it was time, we went to the temple and Joseph purchased two turtle doves for our sacrifice. While we were there, we encountered two very old people of deep faith, Simeon and Anna. By God's Holy Spirit's guidance, they knew who Jesus was. That was extraordinary. We were amazed, but I have to tell you that Simeon's words were also unsettling. For he said, our son was destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and would be a sign that will be opposed by those that so that the inner thoughts of many would be revealed and that a sword would pierce my soul too. Oh, let me tell you, Simeon's prophecy was always in my heart and in the back of my mind. It was fulfilled that day on Calvary. My soul was shattered there. I feared the worst. After we fulfilled our religious obligations at the temple after the birth of Jesus, we returned to the house in Bethlehem. An amazing, surprising event occurred that night. Some scholars from the East appeared, telling us that they had followed a brilliant star and had come to worship the child who was born king of the Jews. I must tell you that when they arrived, Joseph stepped outside and saw that bright star. He came in and nodded, and I showed them Jesus. They kneeled 
and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh as they worshipped my son, the king of the Jews. They told us that they had stopped at and questioned Herod. When they left us, however, they decided that they would go back a different route and not go and report to Herod that they had found Jesus. That night, the angel of the Lord appeared to my husband in a dream and told us to go to Egypt. We left immediately. Oh, dear God, what Herod did when we heard that, we just wept. He had killed all the children aged two and younger in and around Bethlehem. So much death, so much weeping, so much sorrow, so much pain. Herod wanted to kill Jesus. We fled to Egypt for his safety, to save his life. Egypt would again become Israel's salvation. People don't realize that there were a lot of Jewish people living in Egypt. And just as people helped us in Bethlehem, people in Egypt helped us as well. The gold from the Magi helped with our expenses. We stayed in Egypt until the Lord let Joseph know that it was safe to return. But Herod's son was ruling, so we went to Nazareth, where we would be safe and where we had a good life. Oh, Joseph taught our son well. The ways of Yahweh, the trade of carpentry. And as good Jews, we would take Jesus to temple weekly, and we would go to Jerusalem for religious festivals. The year that Jesus was 12, we went to Jerusalem for Passover. When the festival ended, we started for home, thinking that Jesus was with others in our caravan. When we found out that he wasn't, I was frantic. Joseph appeared calm, but I knew that he was worried about our son. We went back to Jerusalem and spent three days looking for him. I was beside myself. We finally found him in the temple, talking with the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. In my fear, I lashed out at my son and chastised him. Jesus calmly responded that he had to be in his father's house. Joseph touched my shoulder, knowing, and we embraced one another. What a day that was. We returned to Nazareth, and Jesus was obedient, and he increased in wisdom. Oh, when Joseph died, Jesus took on the shop and the responsibilities and provided for me and for his younger siblings until the time came for him to answer God's call and for Jesus to begin his mission and his ministry. John, Elizabeth's son, baptized him in the Jordan. I heard that a dove appeared and the voice of the Lord God had said that Jesus was his son and that he was pleasing to him. Then Jesus had gone into the desert for 40 days, Again, I worried so much more than I did for those three days looking for him in Jerusalem. I knew that Jesus was now truly about his father's business. He called disciples, 12 of them from different walks of life. Other men and women followed my son. He preached and taught and healed. He even raised some from the dead like his dear friend Lazarus. I was present for his first miracle when he turned water into wine at the wedding. I don't think my son was too happy when I suggested that he do something to help out the couple. My hour has not yet come, he said to me. 
he turned water into wine. Word spread, people flocked to him, and he came to the attention of the religious and the civil authorities. I knew that that wouldn't be good. That last Passover was so hard. Jesus knew what was coming. He tried to prepare us, but nothing would prepare us, me, for the horror my son would have to endure. It's too much for me to bear. Not only did the sword pierce my soul, it nearly killed me. With his dear friends, Mary of Magdala and John, I stood at the foot of his cross. The others, fearful of the same fate, ran away. Who could blame them? There were times during Jesus' ministry that he said things to me or about me that hurt. But I realized that he did so to make a point. I always knew he loved me. At the end of his life, hanging on that cross near death, he entrusted me to his beloved disciple John. John would care for me. He still does, calling me mother. Death could not hold the Son of God, my Son, my Lord, your Lord. Jesus was raised from the dead. He lives! And his teaching and his love spread from generation to generation. You are now living proof of these, dear ones. You are beloved of Jesus the Christ. You too are called to spread the story and to spread his love. What a life I have led. Much joy, much sorrow. I am old now and tired. My son, my Lord, promised us on that last Passover that he would come and take us to the place he has prepared for us. I know that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And I am ready for my son to come and to take me to himself. I am ready for my new life in him. I am so ready to see my son and my Lord. One day you will be too, but not yet. Until then, tell others about Jesus and live the full life that he has given to you. Jesus loves you, and so do I.
Let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. You have revealed your love for people overlooked and cast aside, sending your Son to be born among the humble and poor. Send your Church to proclaim good news to those who feel abandoned, despised, and rejected, and make our congregations places of genuine welcome and hospitality. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All creation longs for healing and restoration, thwart the destruction of plant and animal, animal habitats, and amplify the voices of those who advocate for wise stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember your promise to our ancestors and look to you for justice. Expose pride, greed, and exploitation wherever it is found and raise up humble leaders who act on behalf of those who are poor, oppressed, or in other need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit lives in our hearts and makes us heirs of salvation. Rescue us from shame and dishonor. Lift up the lowly, fill the hungry with good things, and have mercy on those who turn to you for help. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary's song of praise and amazement echoes through this assembly. Attend to those in this congregation expecting a child and console those struggling to conceive. Come to the aid of those enduring a difficult pregnancy and those who have experienced a miscarriage. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who have found refuge in you, O God especially Mary, mother of Jesus. As you have delivered them from all their afflictions to save us from all our earthly troubles, until that day when we sing your praise together in heaven, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share our Lord's peace with one another. Chris, the peace of the Lord be with you. Pastor, the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bonds of death, and as he promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exalts in boundless joy. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This blood is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for today and all the days of your life. Thank you, Jesus. This is the body of Christ that is given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ that is shed for you. Amen. Chris. This is the body and blood of Jesus Christ given and shed for you. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Dear ones, beloved of Christ, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor coronavirus nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless and keep you in eternal love. Amen. <laughs>